Hey line, hi folks, it's Lev, welcome back to another video, for those of you who are new, I knew see him pronouns. I don't think I've filmed many videos in this shirt, like this yellow shirt. Yeah, I really like this shirt as well, it's, it's from Vietnam actually. Today I wanted to talk about an escape room I did with one of my close friends today. So I've done face-to-face -face escape rooms before, and I've also done online escape rooms before. And today's escape room, like, it was the first time I've done a face-to-face -face escape room in over five years. The last time I did a face-to-face -face escape room was in high school. And that was ages ago. And, yeah, it was just me and my close friends, just two of us in that room. And the theme of it was Survivor, so it's about, like, a virus outbreak and zombies being, like, people being affected. I think they turned to zombies, and then the point of... The mission of the escape room was to find a cure, essentially. The first different thing about this room is that they didn't blindfold me and my friend and walk us into the room. Like, we weren't blindfolded, we walked into the room and they closed the door behind us after um, they explained the instructions and everything. While the one I did over five years ago, me and all my friends were blindfolded, we were led into the room, and then we took our blindfold off when the door was shut behind us already, and then that's how we started. But with this one, it's different. And so in the first room, I was handcuffed to a wall. My right hand, it was, they didn't cuff both hands. One of my, my right hand was cuffed to the wall. And one of the first things we had to work together to do was get the key to unlock the handcuffs to get me free. Otherwise, we won't be able to, I guess we could go to the next room without finding the key for me, but that means I would be trapped there and my friend would just go through the entire thing by herself. So one of the first things we had to do was find the key. Unlock, find the code to unlock the unlock the thing to get the key to uncuff me. I've never been in handcuffs in my entire life, not even one arm. So it was very interesting experience, just being cuffed to a wall. <laughs> so in total, there were four rooms. I mean, like in this, yeah, four rooms we had to work through. And we spent like 20 minutes in the first room because we couldn't figure out the clue. <laughs> and we spent a very long time in the second room too. And we only had like 20 minutes left for the last two rooms. But we managed to get out in time. They gave us one hour to do it. We got out with one minute to spare. And we, just, we did the last two rooms within 20 minutes. And the first two rooms took us 40 minutes. Yeah, so after unlocking the calf, we had to figure out the code to get to the next room. And then we did that and... There were like fake arms, fake legs with like blood and everything, a fake torso with blood. It would look like it's been like dissected and everything. And there was fake blood smeared across all of the walls, like handprints, everything. The whole wall, the entire wall of that second room was completely covered in blood, fake blood. And and there was like a, a gate, a gated door to get to the next room and we had to open that gate to get to the next room. And behind that, there was like a wheelchair with a fake head on it and a, I guess a special torch that shines light and we could see this hidden message. And the, seeing that wheelchair reminded me of Outlast. Like, I started playing Outlast. I've, I've watched YouTubers play the whole thing like years ago, but I, I actually started playing it. A few months ago, but then I stopped. And I switched to a different game. But yeah, I... There was that wheelchair. In Outlast, there's like the picture that of the wheelchair in like dim light. That's what I saw behind the... On the other side of the gated door to the next room. I'm like, this is so cool. It reminds me of Outlast. And then there was like intense music in the background the whole time. Like very suspenseful music with some zombie sounds in the background. And... In this second room, my friend and I, we overanalyzed everything. And that's why there was like drawings of like DNA and mutations on the wall. And there was like brains and organs. Like, I don't know what it's made out of. It's like a model of brains and stuff. Purses of the anatomy and stuff on the walls. Which all of it in the end ended up being a distraction because none of that was news to actually open the door to the next room. And what I realized by the end of doing this escape room is that it's very obvious. Like, the things are obvious, but then I tend to overanalyze everything. 
and then just complicate the entire thing by myself and then start missing the obvious clues, I got very annoyed. I got very annoyed when we figured out the answer and it was like complete, so easy and I was just overcomplicating things. Looking at all these DNA things on the wall and like, okay, what's the pattern here? I didn't have to do any of that. And the next room was actually an elevator. It was a legit elevator, but it didn't go up and down like, but there was power. And in this elevator room, actually I'll touch on the second room a bit more. So we had to find a five letter code to unlock the cabinet which led us to the next hint, which was actually before then. In the first room with the key that, the handcuff key that was unlocked, there was a USB drive there. I didn't see the USB drive. We didn't take it to the next room. And that's why I started overanalyzing everything. And I called the, the worker for help. And they're like, there should be a USB drive from the first room. And there's like this record CD. There was this radio player thing. I saw that. But then I was like, I didn't even have to analyze everything. The, the next hint was literally on that USB drive we left in the previous room. And it was like, it took so long for us to figure that out. I mean, we didn't figure it out, we asked for help. And then from there, uh, we unlocked the, cap the cabinet, which had a file and there was like a, a pin pad thing. We had to type in the code to unlock a different cabinet, which had a phone, which had the phone and in the phone, there was pictures, and we used the pictures to figure out the code to unlock the gated door to the elevator room with the wheelchair. And the elevator was a room, like it was an actual elevator. And we closed the door, and then we we activated it with a key, and then the power went out. It it, it wasn't like. It was part of the game, I should clarify. Like, it's not like the entire place blacking out and there's no power. This specific power blackout in the elevator was intentional. Like, it was rumbling. Like, we didn't actually move up or down, but there was rumbling sound to represent us moving in the elevator. And then, complete blackout. It completely blacked out. We couldn't see anything. But luckily, we had that torch from the second room, which I used to see things. I brought it along with me. I didn't leave it in the other room. And then there was like a fake rat with a key that dropped from the roof of the elevator. It came out of nowhere. And that, that had the key to activate the backup power. And we activate the backup power more rumbling a little, a little bit. No, not really. There were not really lights. And then it stopped. And then there was no door that opened by itself. None of the, like, there was no door. I'm like, um, is this supposed to happen? I call for help. I'm like, is this what's supposed to happen? Or, like, is the door supposed to open or something? And then the worker explained, like, we clarified that, me and my friend clarified that we had done all the steps. And then the worker said, you've done all the steps you need. You just have to figure out how to get out of that room, which is the elevator. And I was just, I stumbled upon it accidentally, like, the, one of the walls of the elevator was a door and I accidentally like touched or leaned on it. I'm like, wait, this opened. And that led to the last room. We were in there for a few minutes. Like, how the hell do we get out of here? Like, I didn't think that, you know, pushing the side of the elevator door would lead us to the next room. And that happened. And that last room was very intense. Like, a zombie robot. It was like behind bars and everything. It was like in a cage essentially, but a robot zombie. And then there was like these DNA test tube things and a lot of handprints around. And my friend and I had to put our hand on the handprint and push in like a, a little brick. So there were like two handprints to, on like different sides of the wall. So my hand, my hand, I pushed one button, my friend pushed the other button. That activated the last room. Basically, there were, I should also say, there were like two pants in there and there were like two two laser pointer things, but only one of the laser pointers worked. Like there were two pans there and once the room was activated, that z robot zombie just jumped out. It just came to life and it actually jump scared me. There were a few jump scares in this escape room and it was like growling really loudly and stuff. And I'm like, come at me, bro. I'm not scared of you. Come at me, bro. And then like, it was like, I think there was flickering lights and there was like really loud, intense music with 
zombie sounds. It reminds me of The Last of Us. If anyone has played The Last of Us, it reminds me of like infected coming at me and stuff. And then at but like a few minutes after the door opened with the worker standing there and I was like, wait, is this the end? Like, did we finish the room? And then that actual end fight fight, zombie fighting scene, like it was supposed to simulate a zombie fight. And that's why they were like pants in the rooms and use those weapons to protect ourselves from zombies and stuff and the zombie like it it started like it was alive and it was uh, and stuff and then it died down for a little bit and then it came up again out of it activated again out of the blue and it's it scared me again and then i was just like here punching like it was behind the cage and i was just like punching i was speed punching on the other side i'm like come at me bro i'm not scared of you and then, yeah, that was the end of the, the escape room. Um, the door opened, the worker was there, and then we actually managed to get out just one minute before it finished. So we're given 60 minutes to do the room. We got out with one minute to spare. A little bit more context about the room. So yeah, there was a zombie outbreak, and then my friend and I were playing characters where we had to go into the hospital to find the cure, but then the, the hospital was overrun with zombies. And that was the context of the end, um, the fight scene. We had to go get the vaccine or the cure, but then there were also zombies overrunning the hospital. And just some reflections about my escape room experience. So despite being under stressful circumstances, particularly in that, slot, the elevator in that last room, I could still maintain focus. I could still think clearly. I still had a clear head essentially. And while I did experience jump scares and there might have been increased heart rate and everything. I wasn't really paying attention to my physiological response. But the point is, I still kept my cool. Even in stressful situations, like the elevator blacking out. Yep, that happened. I'm just like, okay, what do we do next? Uh, how do we, what's the next step forward? And in the last room with the, um, the zombie fight and stuff, I was still like, despite the zombies screeching and the intense music in the background, I could still think clearly. I'll be like, okay, what are we supposed to do? Like, my friend got out and I got confused because we thought we had to solve a puzzle or something like that, but it was purely just imaginary fighting with zombies. But then I still cut the key and I'm like, okay, what, what are we supposed to do here? Like, okay, we've activated the room. The zombie came to life. There's like all these flashing lights. Okay, what do we do next? What's the next puzzle? What are the clues we need to collect? What do we need to decipher? Like, I still was thinking that. I wasn't thinking, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Even at the start when I was handcuffed to the wall, I could still think that. It was not like, oh fuck, I'm handcuffed. And then my physiological response then and all this stress and then I freeze in, I freeze in panic and fear like, that didn't happen to me and part of it is because of martial arts training and stress inoculation and putting myself physiology replicating what it feels like to be stressed and training my brain to keep cool even even though my body might be under stress and the physiological response is activated mentally i'm still here and that training martial arts significantly help with that and that's it translates into today's escape room experience too where I was under stress we had a time limit and stuff like that and again with the intense music in the background and just unexpected things happening like the power going out pitch black the rat dropping from the ceiling unexpectedly I could still action things and that's I wasn't, I wasn't always like that when I was younger. Like I used to paralyze and fear and like, oh shit. And when my body got stressed, my mind also got stressed and it was connected and there wasn't one without the other. But today, physiologically, it was, my body's on a bit of stress, but psychologically I was, I was cool as a cucumber essentially. And it took me a very long time to get to this point. I mean, like, it is like, it's important to keep cool and be able to think clearly still in the face of stress because if again if I went into panic I freeze then half of our team is gone and and then time is ticking tick tock tick tock tick tock tick tock
Finishing this video, I absolutely love escape rooms and I intend to do more with my friends in the future. Thanks for watching folks and I'll see you in the next video.